Hello equipment people. We'll do some Medill next week again, midweek. Do a few Richies. I picked this one because the cover looked neat. It's a bit of an oddball. So, Portland, Oregon, 1977. I know I've remarked before, you didn't see a lot of side screens, the mesh on the American equipment. Not all of it had it here either, but certainly a greater percentage. It's not a very big auction. And over to Western Canada, which living in BC, I don't consider Alberta Western. It seems like it's hundreds of miles away, but and it is from my from the West Coast side, but it is Western Canada. Seems more like the prairies though, Alberta and Saskatchewan. <laughs> Fleet of drag lines. Man, oh man. That's a bygone. One thing in BC, the dozer market sure is not what it used to be. And the excavators kind of took over the world. But I will say it, I believe in Alberta, like the D678 size, they still use that stuff just huge. Whenever there's a big Ritchie auction, it's always got tons and tons of dozers. It's a newer D6s and 7s. Good looking bush trucks. That one's a Mac R700. You know, the 7 had a longer hood. I learned and drove on a 1972 R600. Short wheelbase one. They're like a little buckboard. Tough riding. That's got to be a typo. I haven't looked it up in here. That's got to be a typo. That's like a 955 or 
And for the guys at the Hayes Club, you probably want to note that 75 serial number on a Hayes truck. They love that stuff. And an old Mac like I've talked about once or twice. Well, Hayes version. Grew up riding in one of those too. So. I guess I grew up riding and running and driving and cutting and logging and milling and skidding. Just all kinds of different things. We did that video a while back on that one that was in the barn with no motor in it. Or it was a Mac, but... Those are called the flat fender Dodges. A lot of them had Detroits and 318s in them. And this is all specialty stuff here. Go truck. Hmm. Not familiar with that name. And last one. It's got a V bucket on it. Strange setting to be V bucketing, usually just for trenching. HD41, the granddaddy of dozers. Those things are just monster. Well spoken of. So. Some of these Pacifics would end in the word, like call it a, P500, a P510F or S, and the F meant the fiberglass hood like that one. And the S was the steel hood, which the butterflies opening. And a D9G doesn't need in any introduction. So. The kill dozer, just a just a really neat piece. Just mean, even there, 50, 60 years later here, they're still mean looking. And they would not get laughed off a job site today. If one showed up, they would command respect, and people would be watching at work. The whole corner of the blade's missing off that U blade on the K here. Life in the rock quarry. I've run these just a little bit back in the day. The loader ones, I've played on a couple of the little dozer ones, and they're not a super comfortable, enjoyable machine to run. Especially I put a lot of hours on a D3B, I guess it'd be a 1988 one, back in high school. And the deer just doesn't hold a candle, just in the feel and the way they operate. The cat was far superior. I ran one of those once too, I think it was a 920. Back in 1992 or 3 or somewhere way back. Just for a bit. I was doing snow removal. We rented it off someone we knew. Or I was 16 at the time. So, yeah, I got to drive it down the road. And I remember it had air brakes. So I was worried I didn't have an air ticket. But it didn't matter. Some good Pacific serial numbers here. All that guarding and no thumb, it's kind of not pointless, but in 1976, they weren't doing thumbs yet. The thumb didn't really take off here in BC. It was called the Hydra Clamp. They sort of 1981-ish, 82, they started to get a little bit of traction. 
by mid eighties, they were, they were kind of a real good option, but they were very expensive. And into the nineties, just about everything spec'd out would have one. Now there's a name, CMI. No idea, looks really heavy built. It's like Laterno style engineering there. Well, that's an old, that's one of the first finning drill rigs for that era then. And that's a nerdy looking log loader. The boom's too long, the stick's too long. I don't think that was a heel machine. I think that was put on after because the way that that drop down little gooseneck on the arm, that was meant for a dangle grapple. That, that's not meant for a heel, that angle. Cool looking Mac. A lot of those had Detroits in them. Ridden in many of those. Well, the Bronco's cool. I actually got one in my shop, a 78 right now. It's going in for paint in the next couple of weeks. It's going the freewheeling one with all the stripes. I already got the stripe kit ready for it. Forklifting, bull moose, those were made here in Vancouver. Oops, now you know where I'm from. I'm not from Vancouver, so shoot me if I say I'm from there. That's... Yeah, who'd ever thought that would become an extinct or a rare sight to see a Pacific logging truck and let alone now to see one that any log truck that was a five axle setup would just be unheard of. I've heard there's a few around, but they just can't haul the wood. I mean, we go in cubic meters here. I mean, that thing can haul 28 to 31 cubic meters, maybe a little bit more in cedar, 33 or four legally. But I mean, a truck now is expected to have 40 on it minimum probably up and well into the 50s on long logs okay that'll keep you for uh till next week thanks for watching